Thank you very much for staying with me. If you are just joining, we are still looking at VAR models in Stata. So this is just a recap. Please, before you proceed to watch this video, make sure you have watched the one I did on VAR estimation and discussion. So on the screen is the three variable VAR model that we are still using, PDI, PC, and GDP. And I remember saying in that video that uh, in the VAR model, the dependent variable is a function of its lag values and the lagged values of other regressors in the model. And that all the variables in the VAR model have equal lags. Then the way you specify your VAR equation is very important. You don't specify it in false differences. VAR must be specified in levels. If you specify in false differences, you have only uh, misspecified that VAR model. I also discussed some reasons why you may want to engage a VAR estimation. It could be because there was no co-integration when you did Johansson test, or maybe you just want to establish causal relationships, or you want to simulate shocks to the system and trace out the effects of shocks on the variables, or perhaps you want to look at the forecasting capability of your VAR system. So all these reasons can be given for estimating a VAR model. And here's a recap again on how to go about it in Stata. Make sure you specify the model correctly. I've shown you an example of the one I'm using. You can copy mine and just modify to suit your study. Make sure you time set your application using this command T set. If you don't do it, Stata will not run your time series analysis. Then first thing, perform stationarity test. Ensure that the series are all integrated of other one, definitely not other two. You can use any of these tests. You can decide on any one to use. Then determine the optimal lang length k for the model using the syntax VASOC. Then estimate VAR using the syntax. So we did steps one to five in that video. Now this video, I'm only going to concentrate on diagnostics and also interpret the results. So join me as we move over to Stata. So now back to Stata. This is the results from our VAR estimation using two lags each for the variables on the system. So now we proceed to testing for some diagnostics. So the first test I'm going to check is for autocorrelation. And this is the command I've spelled out here, maximum lag of two because I've been using two lags. So I run this. So we can see here at two lags, we cannot reject the null hypothesis of no autocorrelation. So this model is good. So the next test I'm going to run is the normality test, which is the Jacobera test. I'm highlighting and executing. So here on the screen is a normality test, specifically the Jacobera test. We can see here the three equations making up the vast system. For the PDI equation, the null hypothesis of normality cannot be rejected, but we reject that hypothesis for PCE. From here, we can see that the errors are not normally distributed. For the GDP equation, we cannot reject the null hypothesis of normality. However, overall, for the entire VAR system, the errors are normally distributed. So again, this is good. We can proceed. So lastly, we test for stability using this command, highlighting it, and execute. So here, we have all the eigenvalue stability conditions all listed out. The most interesting information here is that all the eigenvalue lie inside the unit circle and the VAR satisfies stability condition. I once got a question from a student and was asking whether it's important to perform post-estimation checks, particularly maybe for VAR or ARDL or whenever you have performed any analysis. And my answer was that if you don't perform some diagnostics on your estimation, your results may not be taken seriously. You yourself may not even have confidence on what you have done. So it's always good to perform at least a couple of diagnostics to ensure that your model is stable, to ensure that the errors are normally distributed, to ensure there is no heteroscedasticity and there is no autocorrelation. At least perform those basics. And if you are going to use your VAR for inferences, for impulse responses, or to estimate or analyze shocks, you need to be sure that at least the model is stable, okay? So performing diagnostics is very important after you have done any estimation. 
So that concludes our tutorial on diagnostics. Please don't go away. I'm still going to talk about causality tests, and impulse response functions, and uh, forecast error variance decomposition. Subscribe to my channel if you have not done so. Share my videos, share my links. Crunch Econometrics is dedicated to beginners and intermediate users of um, econometric applications. Please stay with me one more time. Don't go away.